Hey cats, it's Tim from Cat Attack again. I wanted to take you through a little trick that I found of adding the ducking capabilities on an effect for an instrument when that effect doesn't normally have a ducking control. Now you'll know that ducking is basically uh, moving out of the way of the incoming signal and increasing as that signal decreases. So you'll find that on the echo here in Reason where the echo will get louder to a certain point and then when the primary signal comes back in, it cuts back out again. But you won't find that on all the effects. So how would we go about doing that? Well, let's take a look. I'm using a pad here in Diva from UHE, which is such a great plugin. And it is a nice, smooth pad with a long tail, leaving a lot of space in it. And I want to be able to add some kind of distortion effect to it but not affect the smoothness of that original signal. And you say, well, how do you do that? Because a distortion is primarily just a on processing kind of effect. It's not an additive kind of effect. It is actually processing the signal. So let's first listen to what I've got right now. It's a nice little, uh, looks like 16 bars of uh, pad playback here, and we'll hear what it sounds like. space there. Okay, so we want to add an effect to that without affecting that original smoothness. Uh, another effect I really like is in the Audiomatic here. The Audiomatic is so much fun to play with. I know they wrap it in this uh, veil of mystery as to what exactly is going on in the background, but it's still a lot of fun with these buttons to play with. Uh, one of them I really enjoy is the wash effect. When used uh, intelligently, it can add a lot of interesting uh, characteristics to an instrument. It always comes up at 100% wet, and when played back, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So you can see it's killing a lot of that feel for the original pad. But it does that little increase here. It's this long tail. It's, it's so delicious. There it goes. Now, I want to keep that second half of the effect, but I want to keep the original smoothness. So basically, I want it to try to crossfade itself now, you're going to say, Tim, of course, you could just draw up an automation on the wet dry and just, you know, just grab some lines and just throw it here and there. But I want something that's going to more closely mirror the signal, which is, if you're looking at the waveform, is incredibly dynamic and dense. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have a lot of controls, especially in Reason 12 and having the dedicated inline combinator here. So we added, I added this in, and I've got my little compressor there just to smooth it out a little bit more. And I've got my Audiomatic here. Now, I want to find a good starting position. So we're going to play it back and kind of dial the wet dry until it sounds good. And then that's going to be our starting point. See, that's really nice. And it's not affecting the original sound so much, still adding a little effect there, but it's good. And I'm getting that cross-faded tail up. So I wanted to do it more though. I want to really crank it so you can really feel it evenly switching between the two. Now the trick is, is you're not going to be able to find any other way to, you know, automate these things out, except from what I see here is to use uh, one of their latest effect modules, the sweeper modulation effect. And I'll drop this in here above the Audiomatic. And what we're going to do is we're going to verify that the incoming and outgoing, the input and outputs are routed correctly. So yep, we want to get it before the Audiomatic and send that directly into the Audiomatic. But first things first, we don't care about using the actual phaser, flange, or filter effects. We don't want it for that effect. What we want is a sub-control that it has. So we're going to kill it. 
we're going to kill wet dry. So it's still there. And here's the bad boy that we're going to set up, the audio follower. So this is just an analyzer on that fun signal and gives us a very fine-tuned uh, waveform following the audio that's coming in. So what we can do then is we can flip back to the back of the rack and we have the output for CV on the follower. And we're going to go ahead and plug that into CV1 of our overall combinator. And this is now going to allow us to have a CV following the audio that it's following in the effect. So in essence, this is going to become our ducker, if you want to call it that. Um, so what we do then is we're going to come up here to the Audiomatic in the editor function. And you'll see I've already edited this in and dialed it in. So we're taking that CV in one, targeting it to the wet dry. And I've already kind of played with it to figure it out, but I needed to invert the control. We'll just go back down. So you can see here, this is where the parameter minimum and maximum, and there's our little gradient of what the, the scale is that the audio follower CV works within. Now, we can see down here, and this is the other fun thing about doing it through a combinator, is we can visually see the wet-dry controls. That gives us that visual indicator of, okay, I needed to move one way or the other. If we were to go here, and yes, we could plug directly into the wet-dry, this control doesn't register the change visually. You would love it to. That'd be great. So we're going to just you know take it a different way. We're going to go up through the combinator, but this also affords us that second level of control here of saying, well, I don't want it to work this way. This is the wrong way I want the wet dry to work. So I can come here and I can not only invert it. Can you hear that? I can set it this way, and now it's inverted. So it's literally just multiplying everything coming in by negative one, as you can think mathematically. But now I also have the ability to scale the control coming in. So I don't want it to going maximum and minimum here because I still wanted some effect. Now, if you remember, I had dialed it to say 30%. We'll put it right back there, just around there, whatever. It's gonna set itself back up anyways. So we're gonna set the maximum to 30%. And if it gets tricky to hit it to 30%, remember when you left click and hold and move a dial up and down, hit shift on the keyboard, and that goes into precise mode where it will literally change one integer at a time. So that's really nice. And look at that, I can adjust the scale as needed. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that back down. I want this to be 30. So there we are. And now with the audio follower, obviously we're gonna need a really good attack. Let's say we're gonna set this release a little, a little faster than usual. Again, I wanna get it to right around 90. And the signal is coming in a little hot, so I'm gonna cut it quite a bit here. And that's close enough. And now let's hear what happens. interesting. I love that sound. Yes, it's so good. I hope you found that interesting and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.